What's up, divas and divos? Of course, you know what time it is. It's Wednesday. It's your girl, April. And today, I'm going to be up close and personal in your face, in your space, whatever it is, because I really do want to put my face on as well as tell you guys the bullshit morning that it has started off with for me today. But most of all, I want to put my face on. And of course, we're going to read the tea, spill the gossip or whatever you want to call it, advice on today's show so before we even start you already know i always talk about myself i mean because i mean i'm saying i love to talk about myself now let me tell y'all something the morning started off real kind of it did start off good you know what i'm saying i took mumsy to school and shit and i have been back on my walk you guys i've been back walking every morning like i said i was going to do all right like i said i was going to do and when I was on my way out the door, because I take my grandson with me, why did I notice that one of the caps on my rims were missing? It was there yesterday. So when you remove the cap, it's screwed on. You have to remove the cap to steal the rim. You can't steal my rims because I have them locked. So they just took the motherfucking cap. I'm so pissed because it's just ridiculous how people could be so petty. And then on top of that, you know, I know it's time to get my nails done. I've had these same nails on for six months. You know what I'm saying? I go get them filled. Can y'all tell me what the fuck happened? So I guess it's really time to get them taken off. You know what I'm saying? Because my nails underneath have cracked and so the knees cracked. So I guess it's time to take these off. Tati, my daughter, said, once I get these removed, she's going to remove them for me. I should wait for a while to get them redone so my nails can breathe. Now, you guys already know, I never really did the nail thing, meaning um, I don't really wear nails too much. But once I got these on, which was six months ago, I decided to upkeep them. Now, you let a bitch take them off. I ain't going to want to put them back on. Come October 14th. A bitch will be in New York City for RPG Show's event, meet and greet. But I will also, I'm hosting that with Shalom Black, but I'm also going upstate New York to see my kids and my ex y'all. So anyway, yes, that's how my morning started off. So I will be getting these removed today. Tati's going to remove them for me. And then I'll just wait until I'm about to go to get them put back on. You know what I mean? But in the... Hi, Mama. Hi, Bull. What's up? Hey. Well, I'm doing my video right now, so you know what I'm saying? You can't be in here. You got to go. You got to go. Mama, do? Yeah, that's your mother right there, but you have to go. See you later. Okay, so y'all did see grandson come through. You know, my mom, my mom. Yeah. But anyway, so you guys, before we even get into this Real Talk video, I'll constantly tell you guys this because I love sharing information with you guys. If you do social media or whatever, YouTube, excuse me, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, check out Octoly.com. If you're a YouTuber in general, check out Octoly. They give away, they give free stuff, absolutely free. All they re require is for you to um, review it. It could be verbally, pictures, whatever you do as long as you're required to uh, review it. They have some really great stuff on there. So they did send me some free stuff. So I decided to do a video with the review. But before I even do that, I wanted to show you guys something um, that I did get from there as well. And I absolutely love it. So if I don't like it, I would tell you guys. First of all, I wear a lot. I don't wear a lot of perfume. I have a nice perfume collection, but I am not a perfume wearer. I just, I guess because I'm in the house all the time and I feel like I don't want to waste something that costs so much. So I don't really wear a lot of perfume and I kind of slowed down on wearing my perfume once my grandson was born because I didn't want to hold like a new baby and have this strong scent on me. So I stopped, kind of slowed down on wearing my perfume on like a daily basis. I would put the shit on when I was going to sleep. But anyway, so when I do find a perfume, I really, really have to find like the perfect one in order for me to spend enough money because some of them start smelling all the same. And I do have my favorites, which I absolutely love. Some of the older scents I really do love, but then you come out with all these new ones that start smelling very similar to one another. So I try to step away from like those floral scents and things like that and get into like the neutral scents or like the, um, just like the neutral scents is what I like like a lot. Tati bought me one that I was in love with and I've seen this at Ulta and I haven't really used it much because it just smells so good but it's amazing and so this is one of my favorites along with this one that I'm about to show you. So if you are aware of the angel by I think you pronounce her name or his name Terry Mugel um 
you know I botch up I botch up names so just keep that in mind this perfume is amazing like it smells really really good there's different scents to the collection but this one here angel is my favorite this one is the Oud de Parfume Oud de Parfume and it is a 3.4 fluid ounce bottle I absolutely love it it has like this scent it doesn't smell florally it doesn't smell it doesn't smell like flowers or citrus it doesn't smell sweet it has like this earthly scent that's the best way that I could describe it it has like this earthly scent and it smells so refreshing and it lasts like it say it stays in your clothes you can wash your clothes and it's still in your clothes and I absolutely love the scent so much um it's not a unisex perfume but honestly I really think like men and women can wear it because it's just so like earthly toned it just smells really really good um but yes, definitely, if you're looking for some perfume, definitely check that out. Or this one. So the other perfume that I'm talking about that I absolutely am in love with is Givenchy. And this one is absolutely amazing. You guys know, like I said, I don't buy a lot of perfumes. And I really just don't like a perfume that is so overbearing um, to where it starts smelling cheap. You know what I mean? I love stuff that is citrus and floral. But some of them just really start smelling the same after a while. So this one right here, I'm absolutely in love with. I been using this one on a daily basis and I will say it is worth the money okay it is more or less like a floral scent but it's one of those that kind of like stand out from the rest this one smells amazing okay so it is more or less like a floral type of scent but this one is like a floral type of scent that you have never smelt before like okay now for one the bottle is gorgeous it's a beautiful size bottle it's 2.5 fluid ounces the concentration of the perfume it's very 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 like flattering you know what I'm saying it has a very potent smell but a very flattering and soft scent like I don't like perfumes that are so overbearing at times you know what I mean like when it's so florally and citrus like and you can smell it and sometimes it starts smelling cheap this one just smells so good and I love a perfume that you can continuously smell on yourself um, but oh my god I absolutely love this I sprayed some of this and my daughter Mumsy was like, ooh, you smell so good. And when I showed her the packaging, oh, she was like, ooh, Paris, because she loves Paris. I love it. I love it. So if you guys are looking for something that is like really, really satisfying and you want your man to be like, damn, you smell good, definitely check out these two right here. Now, this one right here was sent to me through Octoly and I was amazed that the bottle was so huge. But I'm telling you guys, it's so well worth to just check them out. They have loads of perfume. Well, I have been spraying this one on every day because I really do like it. It's a light scent. Um, I really can't. It's like a light scent. It's not strong and overbearing, but it's a very like mesmerizing scent you know what I'm saying like you ever smell something and you just you you don't know the person but you have to just be like you just have to tell them like you know you smell really good like I've done that like I've seen men in the store and I'm they walk past me and I'm like damn he smells good or even women and I'm like you know you smell really good what is that you're wearing like you don't really find a lot of perfumes like that like I've smelled people and they may smell good but they don't smell that good to where I'm like oh damn can I um can you tell me what what perfume you're wearing this one will definitely have you asking the person, what are you wearing? What scent are you wearing? As well as Angel. So, so we're about to get on to this real talk. You guys know, like I said, I do get a loads of free products. So the first thing that you're going to see me put on my face is I'm doing my face with this video. And I'm going to try to make it really fast because I do have to take my daughter to to work is this strobe cream from MAC. Now this is just for if your skin is kind of like dry and dull and you want to lift me up with it, then definitely check that out. But in the meantime, in between time, if you are looking for a real talk video or a real talk advice that you need about yourself, meaning you got some gossip or somebody is starting to really piss you off, you can always go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and please put in the subject line real talk so that way that I know that it is real talk official and if you want the names to be changed in your post meaning her name is Mika but you don't want anybody to know then you can always tell me that April I've changed the names if you don't I will automatically assume that you have and I don't really want to get you in any type of trouble but yes go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button as well as any kind of links or code you may need for other videos that I have referred you to will be down below. But on that note, let's get into this real talk.
Okay, so I went ahead and I put the strobe cream all over my face. So the next thing I'm gonna do while that's setting in is I'm gonna do my eyebrows. And, I mean, not my eyebrows, my make makeup, my uh, my eyeshadow. Girl, let me tell y'all, I actually bought this eyeliner pencil from the Dollar Tree. It's by LA Colors. It's their retractable one, and the color is brown. The funny thing about it is, I always buy this from like an actual store, but it's by CoverGirl, and it's one of those. This one is even better because it's a dollar. CoverGirl is six bucks. So I'm gonna be using this Lancome foundation this is the ultra makeup stick and it is an all-day wear now it is great for my skin it is a foundation stick but I'm going to use it for my eyebrows and for my eyes um, but I do actually like it that does last all day long um, you know what I'm saying it does last all day but the color may be a little bit bland for me meaning it might be a little bit off for my taste so I kind of like mix it with others but for the most part I do like it if you have oily skin and you need something that you want to last throughout the day then you definitely could give that a try like I said it is the Lancome brand and I'll do a more in-depth video tutorial of it but I actually do like it for my eyelids because I'm going for like a neutral look and I also do apply it with um, some of my foundation on my face but yeah the color that I'm wearing is in the color bisque bisque so they don't have a lot of colors in your collection so if you're looking like for 40 shades you're not gonna find that with Lancome but like I said if you have like the lighter skin and some of them are darker then you can definitely check this out this is their all-day color wear and comfort and it is a really soft go um, application it goes on really really soft so yes you guys so let's get into this email this is a long one so be aware okay hi muffins I wrote to you before so if an email address looks familiar that is the reason I hope you don't mind but I really need the advice of someone outside of my immediate family and friends and I trust yours due to the events in your life that you have shared over the years to us viewers in your vids you can call me Nicole and my own estranged boyfriend Leon a baby daddy Leon me and Leon will make a year being together in October of this year we we met in person once then kept in touch on social media then shortly after began a long relationship a long distance relationship throughout 2017 I have flown to visit him a total now of three times each time I have funded the trips which left me basically broke upon arrival but he always assured me once with him he would take care of me for example the food the money the outings whatever during my visiting with him and the way we have faced many obstacles issues I am 25 and Leon is 22 I knew upon getting into a relationship with him that the age difference may play a factor but for the most part Leon was mature for his age due to his past so I thought the main issue I had with Leon was talking inappropriate to other females on social media or through text that some that I somehow always found out about another was his inter was uh, another was his ever interfering high school ex-girlfriend that just absolutely could not let go on May 3rd 2017 two days before his birthday Leon was arrested for parole violations for not reporting to parole as he should this was the first time that I have been involved with a man with any kind of record and a first for me being with someone while incarcerated okay this is how much I love him being that I was unemployed and lived in a different state I literally scraped up enough to go to the Dollar Tree to get supplies to hand make postcards and such over the computer and write and send to him frequently since I did not have the means to put money on my phone and would have to wait until his sister his younger sister would call me on a three-way or he made enough money in jail himself to call me after all that, I was excited to continue our relationship upon his release. June 17th was his release. So much that I finally got a shitty cleaning job working for a shitty lady and her shitty daughter. My paychecks weren't shit. I even felt as though the lady was shortening me. Yet since it had been months, me and Leon talked it over and with my under $400 paycheck, I flew to see him in July on the 21st. When me and Leon talked it over, I told him numerous times, look at my checks are short. If I spend money on this flight, I'm not going to have nothing but about maybe $80 once I get there. 
Do you think I should just wait until I get paid again to come see you, Leon? Leon assured me to just come. Don't worry about it. I got you. I will send you back home. Don't worry about it. Being an emotionally attached fool and not seeing him in months with him being in jail, I agreed to go. Now here's the meat and potatoes. Almost immediately after I got out there, I became pregnant. I meant it had to be a good four to five days within me being out there. I have never been pregnant before, so I knew it. I know my body and I was ovulating. He knew it as well, but yet and still we both knew we made this bed. Now we have to lie in it. We both were happy and keeping it wasn't a question. Only problem is we're both dead broke. I mean dead broke and that that's when tensions started to rise. The lights were out for two and a half weeks. No hot water, no gas, no gas in the car, and plus the tags on the car were expired. Thank God Leon's mom owned a restaurant a couple of blocks away from the house, and that's how we ate, despite her making an issue out of it. I still stayed by his side because he was still making sure we was okay, and plus I love him and couldn't help being... Um, and couldn't help being I quit that shitty ass job a week into me visiting him and out of vengeance the shitty ass lady been holding my last check of twenty two hundred and fifty dollars now I have to take her to small claims court so I couldn't help him out the end of August the end of August things were looking up Leon is a hustler for lack of better words not drugs but white collar crime now we have money coming in, but Leon was not investing it properly. And on top of that, I started having continuous vaginal bleeding due to the pregnancy. Scared and freaking out, I kept telling Leon I needed to go to a doctor to see what was going on. Leon puts it off. In a rage and in an argument, he finally calls me a Lyft, which is like Uber, to the local ER, but does not go with me because he had to make money. I sat in that hospital over six hours by myself and was over it. Not to mention the past couple of weeks, it had been nothing but physical fighting and arguments. After he finally called me a lift back to his house from the hospital, I was livid and we started arguing again once he got home. Then that soon turned into our biggest physical fight that left me scratched up and marked. I walked down the street to his friend's house on the corner and they agreed that I needed to get away from Leon and go back home. Earlier that day, Leon stuck a $100 bill in a backpack because he said I need to not let him spend it. It's money to send me back home. So I guess he was saving up. I took that $100 and got a cheap motel for two nights just to get away from him. After calling and embarrassing, embarrassingly telling my mom, my own mother and father, what happened, neither of them could afford to get me home at that moment. So I had to go back to Leon's house. He was sorry and this and that, but I was just over it, but had nowhere to go. We were on okay terms for a good three days until yesterday. We got into yet another physical fight, twice in one day, the second in front of his two friends, which one tried to break it up. This resulted in me calling my mom again, and she called an old friend, an old friend of hers that bought me a plane ticket. I asked Leon's friend if he could take me to the airport, and now I'm sitting here waiting on my flight, writing you April. The whole time I was here in Atlanta, I kept telling myself I was going to write you because I needed your help. I also kept telling you about, I also kept thinking about all the stories you have told about your life with your ex-husband and it's eerie similar. You've mentioned that your ex-husband battled alcohol abuse and with me in this new day and age, with Leon, it's not drinking, it's weed. It's a weed habit. Although I have one too, which is lean syrup and Molly and Percocet. Yes, like the song, it's very real, especially in Atlanta where Leon is from. That is where majority of his money goes to, and I believe that is what stems the disrespect, the fighting, the arguing, his forgetfulness, lack of attention, and lack of responsibility. But no means me being with him did I condone the drug use or even his way of getting money. I've grown so tired of repeating myself and hearing my own voice when it comes to those matters. But a lot like you and your ex-muffins, I really love him. And I know he loves me. When things are good, things are beautiful. That's my do that's my dog, for real. He's like my twin. We get each other and never judge each other. I can be my true, vulnerable self with him. 
We made this baby out of pure passion. It was on purpose. We knew what we were doing. But now I'm starting to question, is it worth me bringing a child into the world with this man and these problems, not to mention the fact that we're broke? I really do not want to abort my first baby. I waited for the day to become a mom. And plus, I'll be 26 in December. Yes, yeah, still young. I know, but I would rather have my first at this age. He has told me on numerous occasions that if I kill his baby, he'll kill himself. I'm sure that's dramatic, but I know he wants it. And I believe he would be a better father than my... um better father than boyfriend. My number one question to you is, should I keep this baby? My mother says no and to forget about him, but I'm sure she's speaking from my mother's point of view, whose daughter just been through a lot of, with a man. Also, if I do keep it, do you think it would be worth even, it, even if I have to do it on my own or co-parent with him? Lastly, am I a fool for even getting myself involved with him and deep down inside feeling like I'll go back? I need your advice as a mother of five and your advice as a woman who has been in a more uh, a uh, relationship, a bad relationship with a man who loved it deeply but also hurt you deeply. P.S. Although the finding is not acceptable at all on his part, especially now that I'm pregnant, I just want to point out it's just what it is fighting, not him beating on me. He's not a woman beater. Sometimes I can't take his mouth or shit and I initiate it. I'm a thick girl who can fight. Like you said, April, sometimes you got to lay his ass out. This girl is so fucking pretty. Like, dead ass. She's fucking beautiful. And he is handsome as well. But the thing about this whole email, it's really long, whatever, but it doesn't even matter how long it is. Nicole, um, and Leon. So she's 25. Well, she'll be 26. She, and you know what I'm saying? And he's 22. Why do females stay getting involved with some dumb knuckleheads? Like, okay, I get it. Who am I to say anything? Okay. But the one thing that I want to speak upon, and it may not be important to some people, is the fact that she's kind of like justifying it to me because she's like she initiates it. I don't give a fuck how much you initiate anything. It don't give no man no right to put his fucking hands on you, okay? I'm sorry, but that's just, that's not how it works out in the real world. Like on some dead ass shit, that's not how it works in the real world. You don't initiate shit. Fighting is fighting. You're pregnant. It doesn't even matter if you're pregnant. He's not a woman beater. It doesn't matter. You left scratched up and marked the fuck up. That means that he's a woman beater because he put his hands on you and scratched you up on some real bitch shit while you were pregnant. Like, who the fuck does that? That, to me, I would be so embarrassed to even take him back because, for one, the most embarrassing part of it to me would be because I'm pregnant and he beat on me like that. So now you're going to sit up here and try to tell me that it's it's not he's he's not a woman beater. It's just fighting. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't do that all the time. She initiates that shit. Okay, so I guess that's supposed to make it sound real motherfucking good. Let me tell you something. That wasn't the first time. It was three times. So obviously he is some type of beater, okay? And then she's talking about how the reason why their relationship is messed up is because, you know what I'm saying, he smokes weed all the time. So he might be a little bit forgetful and shit and irresponsible so bitch what the fuck is you okay you the one sitting up there fucking taking molly and percocet and lean i think i would in all honesty um me personally in all honesty i'm just being for real on some real shit on in all honesty i would rather smoke weed all day than than fucking sip lean take molly and percocet i'm just saying at least weed you that is condoned it's a condoned drug you need a weed a marijuana card you can go in the store and buy some fucking weed you can't go up in the fucking store and buy no fucking lean and shit that's some sh man-made fucking bullshit that give you all type of seizures and dumb you the fuck out either way neither one of y'all is set to have a fucking baby but who am I to sit up here and judge you and tell you you shouldn't have a baby? Because I would never tell nobody that they should not have a child. Like, who does that? You have kids. You made that baby yourself. So, therefore, you need to raise it. Now, um, if you're going to constantly sit up here and keep making excuses for the nigga, then... Honey, you need to get your brain motherfucking checked the fuck out. Your mother, she's not correct. She she shouldn't have told you to get rid of it because it is a baby. You know what I'm saying? It's a baby. We want to bring a baby in the world. And babies are beautiful and they're innocent. However, here's the here's the thing about that. Bitch, if you motherfucking broke, why is you flying from coast to coast, state to state, seeing the next nigga? I'm sorry, but why this nigga can't come to your hometown? You the one always flying out there seeing him, and he can't come to your motherfucking hometown? 
Girl, bye. I will go once a while. Once we listen, that trip thing would have to be shared. I ain't gonna keep flying back and forth, and he ain't even trying to come out there. And then on top of that, when she get there, he like, I got you, I got you. Well, her little four hundred dollar check. I mean, it ain't a little check, but it ain't enough to be getting on a flight to go see some worthless ass dude that you met over the internet and you seen him one fucking time. And then he went to jail for not reporting to parole. So that's what you think. You know what I'm saying? He told you that's why he went to jail, but I doubt that because um, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I have an ex husband and he was on parole too. He missed a couple appointments. They didn't put his ass in motherfucking jail he just got in trouble okay and he got um he had curfew they didn't put his ass to fucking jail so i really do honestly think that that whole fucking he didn't report to his parole officer like they supposed to do is some bullshit that's just what the fuck he told you and on top of that he on social media talking disrespectful or un not disrespectful it's disrespectful to you but he talking to women other females in ways that he shouldn't and still communicating with his ex-girlfriend girl by where where is your fucking self-respect for your motherfucking self let me tell y'all something i'm not about to spend my last four hundred dollars flying to see no motherfucking body if you done disrespected me on social media by fucking talking to the next bitches that's not about to go down not on my fucking time accord that shit is not the fuck about to go down but on top of that okay i'm not about to sit up here and be broke over no nigga so now y'all both fucking broke which makes no fucking sense okay and y'all trying to bring a baby into this world okay that's fine people have kids all the time and they be broke Ugh. I was a broke bitch when I had my first, second, and third kid, too, okay? Let's just be real about the shit. I was a broke motherfucking bitch, too. However, I'm not about to sit up here and fucking take the blame like she's trying to say for the next nigga. And when I say she's trying to take the blame, meaning she's like, oh, she initiates his anger. He, she initiates that shit. Bitch, you need to get a reality motherfucking check, okay? Here's the thing. So you pregnant, you drinking lean, you using Molly and Percocet. You and you talking about you don't want to abort your baby. Keep doing the dumb shit that you're doing to your body, which is affecting your child. You won't have to worry about aborting your baby. You'll just have a motherfucking miscarriage and you won't have no baby. Or better yet, your baby will be taken from you because it'll come out with all kind of brain issues and fucking tremors and drug reactions when it's born at the time of birth. So you choose the fucking medicine that you want to take and just know the side effects of that shit. Uh, you know something? Let me tell y'all something, okay? Let, let me tell y'all something. First of all, let me find my eyeshadow, okay? Y'all know I stay using the same eyeshadow. I absolutely love it. It's from Shop Miss A for a dollar, honey. So I will definitely put the link below so y'all can get you some dollar stuff. Free shipping, bitches. Free motherfucking shipping. Okay, so here's the thing. This is what I want y'all motherfuckers to realize, okay? He's going to be who the fuck he's going to be. Bottom line. If he wants to talk to females on social media then that's what the fuck he's going to do, all right? If he wants to beat on women, then that's what the fuck he's going to do. If you think that you just initiated him beating on you, then, bitch, you keep fucking thinking that. Also, what I want to try to figure out in this whole thing, so y'all was over there with no electricity for two and a half motherfucking weeks, no hot water, no motherfucking gas, um, no gas in the car, and the tags, the license plate, the tags on the car were expired. And y'all didn't have no food. So his mother owns a restaurant a couple blocks away. So that's how y'all was able to eat. Why didn't one of y'all motherfuckers get a job there? Is what I'm trying to figure the fuck out. Why didn't one of y'all motherfuckers get a job at his mom's restaurant? Because you did say that she owns a restaurant, and that's how y'all was able to eat. Y'all didn't say she worked at a restaurant. Y'all said she owned. You said she owned that motherfucker. So if she owned that shit, why, bitch, didn't you ask for a job? Or how about this? Why didn't her son ask for a job? Knowing that his baby, he had a baby on the way, and I'm pretty sure he told his mama that she should be more than willing to say, well, you know what? You could be a bus boy, or you could, you could, you could do deliveries or something. You know what I'm saying? And you could be a waitress, some shit like that. I mean, y'all, you know what? It seems like to me that your goals and your motivation is really not there. Let's not blame it on that nigga. And let's not blame it on motherfucking love. And let's definitely not compare your situation with mine. Because first of all, my husband was an alcoholic, okay? Second of all, he didn't go around beating on me, especially when I was pregnant. Third of all, he might have crashed my motherfucking cars, but he didn't have a weed problem. And not nor did not have a lean motherfucking Percocet or Molly problem. Second of all, we wasn't broke, okay? We had it together. We just couldn't get along 
after a certain amount of time. So your situation, boo boo, and my situation is totally motherfucking different. Okay. Totally motherfucking different. But here's the thing. You complaining about a shitty ass job and shitty ass wages. Maybe you got a shitty ass job with shitty ass wages because you too worried about getting high on shit that you have no business using. Don't try to say that it's big in Atlanta and that's the reason, that's the excuse of it. Because to me, honestly, there's no motherfucking excuse of using lean or motherfucking Molly or motherfucking Percocet. Honestly, me, I'd be scared to use any type of drug. You know how they be like those crackheads? You see crackheads in the street, you know what I'm saying? And they be all fucked up, they ain't got no teeth. They just fucked up looking, you know what I'm saying? Like just from looking at these people would make you not want to use drugs. You know what I'm saying? Because why would you, you want to look ugly? Why would you want to fucking look like that and go through that shit like you don't have to tell me don't use drugs i see that shit no thanks you know what i'm saying so just from that alone would make me not want to lose drugs and so like i've seen how people be acting on percocet and molly and and lean and shit y'all get dumbed the fuck out and start getting fucking retarded and stupid okay that's what the fuck happened it's bad enough you got less brain cells than you started off with because you fucking decided to use that shit i don't understand like listen me all day well, I haven't smoked weed in like um, a month and a half, but that's my drug of choice, okay? That's the only shit you're going to ever see April smoking on, okay? Because at least I won't sell my shit. I am not about to sell nothing of mine to fucking get no drugs. And I'm not about to walk around here looking like a motherfucking crackhead because I want to be high off of some shit. That's just one thing that I am really not into, nor do I want to be a part of. Like, I'm sorry. I'd be already worried about my eyes and, and fine lines and shit like that. I am not about to be using no motherfucking drugs to make myself look a million times worse. A bitch will didn't fucking kill herself. But back to her, Nicole, I think that's what her name is, right? I think she's delusional. You know what I'm saying? So now you got a baby on the way and thank God you was able to get away from him. But now you're basically, you're just basically trying to give me excuses of why you should go back to him or should you go back to him? But you didn't ask me that. You asked me, should you keep the baby? You didn't even bother to ask me, should you be with the nigga? You just said, should I keep the motherfucking baby? Listen, let me tell you something. I'm not, a, I'm not one to give that type of opinion. I'm not going to allow my opinion like that. Uh, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm, I'm just not that type of person. I can't even use the right words for, okay. Because each person, each person's situation is different. You know what I'm saying? Each person's situation is definitely different in anything. You know what I'm saying? So just because you're broke doesn't mean you don't need a kid. Okay. There's a lot of broke motherfuckers out here in the world that got kids like dead ass serious. All right. Dead ass motherfucking serious. There's a lot of broke motherfuckers in the world that got kids, but you know something for some of those m broke motherfuckers, their children are motivation for them. And they allow that to make themselves strive harder for the things that they want in life. You know, then there's others that just don't give a fuck and who would rather just be using all types of drugs and shit and just say, fuck it. I'm gonna let the system take care of the kid. And and I'll just deal with it when I fucking deal with it. That's those type of people. But for me, when I had my kids, they were motivation to strive harder. Maybe not for my first one. I mean, I did always get paranoid and worry about, oh, things of, of, of you know, how am I going to eat or things like that. But, you know what I'm saying? My children are my motivation to this day. Because if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, the motherfuckers ain't going to have shit. Okay? They're not going to have shit. This you can get from Shop Miss A. This is just a dollar eyeliner. And I um, but, yeah. Should you keep the baby, honey? Don't let me stop you from giving birth. Now, if you want to know if you should keep the nigga, my answer to that is no. Y'all ain't even been together long enough to even have to worry about a relationship with him. Okay, y'all been together like, what, a little bit over a year. In that time frame, you have flown out there like four or five times, okay, and gotten pregnant. And every time you fly out there, you are broke. The nigga is not even trying to give you no money or he's not even trying to come out there. I, you didn't say anything in the email about, oh, well, he said he was going to come visit me. You said nothing in the email about that. My opinion, listen, honey, sometimes having children make us a better person. Okay. Don't think that this nigga is going to be a better father than he is a better boyfriend because you did say that in the email. I don't really understand what makes you feel that he's going to be a better father than a boyfriend. But I mean, you know, you can always keep fucking hope alive. That's what hope is for, to keep that shit alive. 
he he's not a great boyfriend okay nor only that but you know what it seems like she just tries to justify everything that this nigga do like when i say justify everything he do like she, he's a hustler not drugs but white collar crime but damn bitch you gonna ever get tired of that shit too because i'm just saying nigga get a real motherfucking job get a real job that's why his ass is in jail now or on parole now because he's a white collar crime criminal okay and he don't know nothing about getting a real job okay so see this is what i'm talking about she is freaking delusional motherfucking delusional you know i love giving people advice but it seems like sometimes the advice that the, the advice that i want to give them is it just seems like is it going to help them are they going to really listen to me are they going to take heed to what i'm saying and some of the things that they write me is like bitch you shouldn't even be writing me this you should know this just from common sense like you know what i'm saying like just from common sense alone you should know that these things that you're doing is not right so you have money coming in for a minute with the nigga, but he don't know how to invest it right it's a crime bitch it's a motherfucking crime. Either way you look at it, criminal money is not lasting money, okay? You can't bank on that shit forever. Somebody gonna kick your door down one day. Do you really want to be living around somebody that you don't even know what tomorrow brings? Who knows what tomorrow brings in the world? You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember that song? If y'all don't, then that means y'all too young. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a... <sighs> Listen, honey. As a mother of five, if you was my daughter, I would kick your motherfucking ass. Definitely because you on drugs and pregnant. But second of all, let me tell you something. My daughter's Tati. My grandson, Tinky, his father is not the best person in the world. He's in jail. He's young. He stay in trouble. My daughter's not stupid. I tell her what I want to tell her, but she's the one that makes the decision at the end of the day. But she's smart enough to make the correct decision. That's why she's here in Arizona and he's in New York, okay? And she's with me and she has no communication ties with him, okay? Because he's not the right person for you, her. Kind of same situation almost. Not same, but you know what I'm saying? Kind of reminded me of such, you know what I'm saying? However... Your mother has no right to tell you to give the baby up. Nobody has any right to tell you to give the baby up. However, what you need to do is focus yourself on getting motivated, all right, and taking care of your baby. It's 2017, about to be 2018, girlfriend. Would you want to be dead broke for the rest of your motherfucking life? Because you're 26 years old. I remember those days when I was dead broke and had kids, okay? And it wasn't a good, healthy feeling, all right? Wondering where my next was going to come from, how I was going to get shoes on my kids and shit. That shit ain't cool, okay? And doing hustles and white collar crime and all, whatever type of crime, that shit ain't cool neither. What are you supposed to tell your kid when they ask, what does daddy do for a limit? Oh, he's a white collar crime person. Like, really, let's get a grip in life, sweetheart, okay? Stop fucking making um, bad decisions because we all make them. But then once we do, we need to realize that, you know what? That was a bad decision on my part. I'm going to eat this up and I'm going to move forward. Okay? Moving on. All right? Dead ass. Okay? Stop taking the blame for shit because you in here on this email talking about I'm the one who initiates it. There's no such thing as initiating a physical fight to a pregnant woman. Okay? Let's just get that straight. Take care of yourself and your baby and realize that who you were with was nothing but the devil in clothing, okay? You met him through the internet. You went to visit him. He didn't even bother to come out there and see you, which was not really manly. Like, what kind of man does that? And then on top of that, he's doing crimes. His mother got a restaurant. He can't even get a job at. I wonder why she didn't hire him. I wonder motherfucking why. Okay, but you complaining about shitty pay, shitty jobs, and this and this and that, honey. Once you get off of lean, Molly and Percocet, and get your shit together, maybe you'll continue your education, or better yet, look for a better paying job, and you won't have to worry about shitty ass paychecks. When you do shitty stuff, you get shitty pay. All right, it don't matter. When you do shitty stuff in life, the outcome is real motherfucking shitty. Don't think that you can party hard all the time, and there ain't no outcome to that shit. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. It's time to grow up. You have a baby growing inside of you. That nigga don't give a fuck about you. He don't give two fucks about you, okay? Everybody says sorry. I say sorry, too, and then I will cuss you out in a heartbeat. It is not that fucking simple, okay? And it is that simple, meaning, for one, simple as said, you can get it together and leave him the fuck alone, okay? It's just that easy. Your mother... She may feel some type of way, but I guarantee you when your baby is born, she's going to help you. Your father is too, and they're going to love that baby. However, if it were me, 
and I seen you fucking up and going back and forth, I wouldn't help you. So therefore, what I'm trying to tell you is keep your baby, but it's your decision. I'm not one to tell you to abort your baby because who am I to say that? I am not, I, I'm not God. I cannot judge you. But what I can do is give you solid advice, sweetheart. You need to run real motherfucking quick away from him and run real motherfucking quick to the services, social services, and get you some Medicaid and some food stamps and get you some help and get on your feet. And then from there on, take care of yourself and realize that tomorrow is another day and just be glad that you can see that shit and breathe and you got a roof over your head and a little bit of things that you do have and feel blessed okay feel that shit and grow the fuck up okay so now we have like a little guest in the room which is my my grandson because i had to bring my daughter to work real quick so of course you guys didn't see that honestly i really hope that when i give out this my advice this is not my advice basically this is my opinions and my thoughts like advice would be for what you should do I mean and I guess it would be kind of the same thing because if I was put in these situations like for one if I was put in a lot of these situations like these young ladies with these different guys and just disrespectful I would definitely run for the border like I definitely would just take off and run I'm not gonna sit around and wait for like you know what I mean an ending I, I don't think I would wait for too long for him to change though I have waited for my husband to somewhat change so i guess that would kind of be like the pot calling the kettle black in a, in a kind of shape or form however some of the things i just won't tolerate like you know what i'm saying you don't fight a woman in general but it's definitely not acceptable when that woman is carrying your child like i don't think that that's acceptable but you know what each person has their own you know concept each person has their own way of doing things and each person has their own beliefs i'm not saying mine's is right i'm not saying theirs is right i don't i'm not saying theirs is wrong but you know i strongly believe that men should basically keep their hands to themselves you know what i'm saying it's a woman you don't what what type of man would you be to put your hand on a woman does that make you feel manly how would that make you feel like i know if i if it were i i wouldn't want to fight a woman just because of the embarrassment of the way people would look at me you know what i'm saying so i take a lot of that into consideration like i'm not trying to be mocked i'm not trying to be ridiculed i'm not trying to be talked about for putting my hands on a woman so let me just keep to myself those are just my that's just my way of thinking you know what i'm saying that's just how I would do things but you know like I said each person is different to each his own everybody has their own views and everybody is entitled to that however you reap what you sow and if you want to continuously sit around and put up with bullshit then what do you expect you're going to get in return you're going to get bullshit in return you know what I'm saying um and that's just how it goes in life but as far as having a baby and aborting a baby now like she said you knew what you were going to do in the situation you knew that um you were going to have a baby. Now, you knew you were broke ahead of time. So in all reality, in all reality, if you think about it, this is your fault, you know what I'm saying? So now you wanna go ahead and you wanna turn around and take the easy way out and get rid of a baby. But what type of person does that make you? You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm not one to judge anybody. I cannot really tell you to get rid of a baby to not. I will be honest and tell you at 16, I did get rid of the baby, but let's just be honest I was 16 years old my mother would say things to me that would scare the shit out of me so that's why I didn't have my my very first pregnancy but a year later I got pregnant in that one I decided I'm just going to keep him okay but things happen for reasons and though it's to me it's like at least you see how he really is now you know what I'm saying you went out there and you was able to live with him for a short period of time you would not have known these type of tendencies that he had had you been on another state. So I really kind of think that things happen for a reason. Things happen for a reason. You know what I'm saying? People are put it in your life for a reason. I've said this before in another video and I strongly believe in it. So maybe this baby will make your life a lot better. Not maybe make it easier because God knows having kids is not easier. But maybe to make you strive for more and want for more. You know what I'm saying? Instead of Molly Percocet and Lean and niggas that don't do shit but want to have hustles. Like it's cool to have a side hustle but that side hustle should always be legit you know what i'm saying and i know times get hard but i mean let's not glorify side hustles and white collar crime and let's not take the blame for shit that this nigga do like who does that like girlfriend you're beautiful you're absolutely beautiful and he's nice looking too but that doesn't that don't get it all the time looks ain't always gonna pay the bills and obviously his motherfucking didn't so in all honesty sweetheart i really do think you need to move the fuck on like moving on okay to the next like let me tell you something. 
you know, I might have got a little bit offended when she kind of compared her situation to mine with my ex-husband, sweetheart. That is not the same situation. Though we was we was together for 17 years, it's not the same situation. However, I do love that man still to this day. And we have children together. We share a lot in common, you know what I'm saying? And that's cool and all, too. But if he was not to change his ways, then I guess, you know, love is a strong thing, but so is my sanity, okay? And a bitch ain't trying to go to jail over no nigga. So you have to really keep that in mind, too. Are you trying to go to jail over some worthless nigga? And when I say go to jail, well, all his little white-collar crimes and shit, I'm saying, get your ass in motherfucking trouble. I am so tired of this sunlight vanishing, going behind the clouds, and fucking up my video for the day. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to show y'all something. It ain't like no makeup look because I'm really not trying to do no makeup look, but um, or no makeup tutorial rather, um, because I'm not no beauty guru. Like meaning, I don't I don't do makeup like that. I don't really know everything about makeup like that. I mean, I do know some things, but. Um, I don't know enough to be like, okay, girls, this is how you would want to do this. And this is how you, what I would probably say is, okay, girls, this is how I do this. Okay. And if you want to follow the fuck along, then you're more than welcome to. And if you don't, then, hey, that's fine too. Okay. So then the next thing that I want to, um, go into before we start the next conversation, because we got two more to do, and I'm going to try to make this as long as possible. And it's fun as possible so they did send me two foundations octally 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 sent me two foundations but they really sent me three one was the lancome which i did use on my eyelids which i'm probably going to use again and they sent me this mac studio fix um studio fix fluid which i love i've owned a bottle of this but unfortunately this is not my color and that was no one's fault but my own Okay, and they also did send me this one right here, which I've been wearing a lot lately. It's the Estee Lauder All Day Wear, and I absolutely love this. For someone like myself who has oily skin and makeup does not last on me, like my oiliness, this lasts all day on my oily ass face. Like, seriously. So, I really do like this a lot. The color that they sent me is Toasty, toasty Toffee. And the color that I have in this uh, MAC is NC45, which is more red tone. This is really great for those who have oily skin too and that's the reason why I applied to review this one but unfortunately I should have gotten an NC42 and not a 45 so this is more red tone and it's very very um, reddish for me I'm going to show you guys the tone of it and I'm just going to put a little bit on my face but it is really great for those who have like oily skin you know what I'm saying I like it for oily skin oily skin people can use this for sure and I'm just going to apply it all over my face because, you know what, I will even it out with that other foundation by Estee Lauder. And I know you're like, well, that's not how you're supposed to do the review, but this is how we're going to do it. Because I do like both of them mixed together for some reason. When I have foundations that are this red in color, girl, you got to make them work because you know you can't send it back. You know you can't return it. And it's like, you know what? I'm not going to waste my money. I'm just going to make this work as best as possible. And that's what I do. Um, you know what I'm saying? You mix a light with it. I mean, I have another brand that's just as nice as MAC, and it's very red like this. Girl, I will still put that on and rock it out. And I'm always going to use this. I got me a new beauty blender. Let me tell y'all something real quick before I go into this email. Um, I know everybody loves MAC Fix Plus Primer Spray. Let me tell y'all. That shit break, broke my skin out so bad. Like, my skin is so bumpy. You can't tell unless until I put my makeup on. But I know it's that because even if I'm not wearing makeup, I'm spraying that on my face. And it has gotten all down here where I've been spraying it. So it is definitely from that Fix Plus. But if you guys have had a reaction to it, definitely let me know. So here we go on to the next. This one started off really funny to me. Like, meaning what she had to say was, like, kind of, like, hilarious. Um, if you want to change the names, you can say my name is Pissed Off Mother and Darcel would be Fat Bitch, okay? Laugh out loud. My name is Erwin, and I'm from Daytona, Ohio. What should I do about these non-caring as daycare teachers and director? Should I pursue the news? Should I call the state on them? Or should I just let it go and let God deal with them? Below is the nasty review I wrote about my daughter's daycare. Parents beware. A&D daycare on... 
1049 Infirmary Road, Daytona, Ohio, 45417. So I'm going to give all the information out just in case any of y'all live nearby and are thinking of using them. A teacher in the toddler room called Miss Darstell is nasty to the kids and parents. I would ask my child how her day was and Miss Darstell would be talking slick under her breath. Okay. My child was telling me that Miss Darcell was pinching her. So I talked to this nasty, I talked to the nice, nasty director about the situation. Wait, so I talked to the nice slash nasty director about the situation. And I thought everything was resolved. Over the next few weeks, my child was telling me other things that were going on in daycare. My child told me that Miss Darcell was still pinching her and told her to sit her ass down. Then a few days later, she told me that someone whooped one of the kids in her class. By then, I started looking for another daycare. When she told me that Miss Darcell was called one of the, when she told me Miss Darcell called one of the kids little fucker, I called off work and found another daycare that day. When I talked to the director, she suggested putting my daughter in another class. I told her my child wouldn't be coming back if Miss Darcell was there. I can't believe that she would keep a person on her staff that is mean as hell to the kids and that would cause her to get a lawsuit from spanking and pinching someone else's child. The rest of that staff that I encountered seemed to be good with the children. Thank God my child can speak very well or I never would have known about what daycare really, what is really going on at A&D daycare. What should I do? Ooh, child. First of all, let me tell you something. Now, I'm glad she asked me that because let me tell you something. I'll never forget this. And you see, it's very reddish. It's very reddish. And I don't know if it's because, the, yeah, it's just very fucking reddish, okay? And the lighting is not helping any. Hold on, guys. Oh, I look like a, um, a Cheeto. Okay, so I was kind of looking like a Cheeto there for a second. And it's, just, it's definitely because of the settings of the camera. I wasn't that red. Um, because I'm looking at myself, but you know, you can see like the red undertones in in this product But you know, I'm gonna just put a little bit more well, I don't even know. I'm gonna just now I'm gonna go ahead with the Estee Lauder Which is a double wear stays in place makeup Listen lady, I'm gonna tell y'all this before I get into my response to this video If you guys have oily skin and you're looking for a foundation that will last you all day long Definitely. I took a nap with this on. I wore it all day long, two days in a row, and it was good. Like, I was like, oh, snap. This is really, like, what's up? Now, the other foundation that's one of my favorite that will last me, it won't last me all day, but it'll last me a good portion of the day to where I, I don't need it anymore. Like, you know, it has lasted me to the point where, okay, well, I'm done doing what I need to do, so it's okay if it wears off. It's this one right here. This is, like, the third time I purchased this, but it's very thick, meaning it transfers just really easy and I hate makeup that transfers on clothing so it's kind of embarrassing when you hug somebody and your face wipes off on them that's just so embarrassing but definitely try the Estee Lauder my best friend Shay actually told me about the Estee Lauder um, long wear because she has it she says she loves it so definitely so here we go let's get into this so basically my girl Erwin has her daughter at daycare and the daycare is a bunch of slouches. I'm going to say slouches because for one, if you can mistreat anybody's child while they're under your care, you're a fucking slouch and you need to be dealt with. I have a similar situation, but not so similar. It was with, um, my daughter. I think it was, was it name? It was Tati. It was Tati. I had took her to this daycare. It was a home daycare that I had found. This was when I was living in Schenectady. This was years ago, okay? And I was much smaller then, too. Just had to throw, throw that in there. And anyway, so it was a home daycare. And my son, Jerron, was at the daycare as well. So I only had two kids at the time. And um, I noticed, I thought it was just me at first, but then I realized that when I put on a diaper, whenever I put a diaper on any of my children, it's loose. It's not so loose to where it's falling off, but I'm not the type of person that takes the diaper tape. You ever notice somebody, some people put their kids' diapers on so tight to where the tapes on each side are kind of like almost touching one another? Like they about to waist train the baby. Okay, so I, I don't do my kids' diapers like that because I just find that to be very uncomfortable. So I do it where it's loose and it's just nice fitting. But this young lady, she was, oh, she, I think she was Spanish. 
she was Spanish or she was mixed with something. She would put the diapers really tight. Okay. She would put the diapers really tight. So that would let me know that she changed the diaper. Well, one day she brought my daughter Tati home. Okay. That she brought the kids home and Tati's diaper was still the way that I put it loose. Okay. So I said, well, maybe she, um, maybe she just decided to do it the right way now. This is what I'm thinking. But I did notice the diaper was really, really wet. So I said, well, maybe Tati had an accident. This went on for a couple more days. And so I asked her, are you changing my daughter's diaper? And she was like, yeah, why would you ask? You know, she said, yes, why would you ask? I said, you know, I said, I'm just curious to know because you know, when she comes home, her diaper is so I didn't say anything about the tape or anything like that, you know, because I'm not about to give up my secrets and what I know about you. So she was like, no, I'm changing her diaper. But also what I was being told by my son, Jerron is that Tati is in the playpen all day long. Like she doesn't let her out the playpen. She feeds them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day. And Tati's in the playpen all day long. Okay. So fine. This son is really starting to piss me off. Okay. Okay. So, you know, this is what Jerron is telling me, my oldest, because he's a couple years older than Tati. Uh, he's actually four years older than Tati. So, you know, he would know better. He can speak. Okay. He can talk. He would know better. So I let it go. I didn't let it go for too long. Um, she brings Tati home one day. She brings them both home one day. Okay. And I apologize for the sun because it is really tripping. Hold on, guys. Okay, so hopefully this works, okay? So as I was saying, you know, Jerron was telling me that Mom, uh, Tati was always in the playpen daily, eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches. She's never went outside with the other kids in the backyard to play. So over the few days, I just kept noticing that the tape on the diaper was still identical to how I left it, okay? Maybe once... When she came home, it was tight again, okay? But then when she brought her home one day, one particular day, okay? One particular day, why was Tati's butt bleeding? Like where her butt cheeks were, her little butt was bleeding. I'm just going to put some of this, which is heart candy camouflage. It's foundation, but it's very light. So I have to use it as a, um, a highlight. I mean, um, you know, under my eyes. So this is what Jerron tells me. Um, and then this is what I see on Tati's butt. She has like these little red blister, like, and it's not, it's like on her butt cheeks, not like where her little rectum is at. So it doesn't, that part doesn't look like it was tampered with, but she has blisters on her butt. Okay. And her diaper is fucking soaked. Come to find out. I don't even call her. I go to the hospital with Tati and I let them see this. Do you know what that was? That was from her not changing my daughter's diaper. Okay. That's what it was from. And that the urine from the diaper had irritated Tati's skin so bad. So the next morning when she was to come and pick up the children, she thought everything was fine, you know. I played it off like everything was cool beans, you know. It's cool. Come through, pick the kids up. I'm going to go to work because at the time I worked at Burger King. Well, she came through in her little minivan to pick the kids up. She came on my porch like she always did to pick up the kids. And what she did pick up was her fucking face off the floor. Okay. I whooped her ass, okay? I whooped her motherfucking ass. First I asked her and she lied and then I let her know that I was at the doctor's office, the hospital with my daughter and was informed. And then I also told her about how I know she never changed the diaper and also about the playpen situation. I beat her fucking ass, okay? And let me tell you something, how I found this di this young lady, this babysitter, this daycare provider through one of my so-called friends in Schenectady, okay? Did this bitch get mad with me because I beat up the babysitter because she was watching her daughter too, which was old. And she was like, you're messing it up for me. You're my friend. Bitch, please. Girl, bye. Okay. Girl, bye. I stopped speaking to her ass too. And I also found me a really good babysitter daycare provider after that. Okay. After that. And that daycare provider kept care of all of my kids. And she's like my mother. Now, Miss Brown is the best thing that's ever happened. Help happened to me. She helped has helped raise my children. Okay, and then she got older, but Mumsy started going to um, the YMCA. So here's my thing, and here is my opinion. 
on should you say anything why wouldn't you okay first of all the state is supposed to come through and check the facilities make sure that everything is proper with any daycare facility why wouldn't you say something keep it in god's hand so your daughter was able to talk could you imagine other children that don't say anything and Miss Darcel or Miss Fat Bitch is talking shit or doing shit to them? Could you imagine the other little children that are being picked on and bullied and, and, and hurt in this woman's care that can't say anything? They're going home crying, but their parents don't even know what's going on because they can't speak. So why would you want to keep that shit to yourself? Let me tell you something, sweetheart. She lucky she didn't catch an ass whooping because had it been me, a bitch would have had a motherfucking ass whooping, okay? Like, for real, for real, I like to give out ass whoopings, and she would have been the one to get a nice ass whooping, okay? Dead ass serious. She would have been the one to get a nice ass whooping. I don't think you should keep any of that information to yourself. That is owed to the public. That is owed to people that have children to let them be known. If this woman that you already have spoken to, the director, and you have already told her about the issue and the situation, and all she can say to you is, well, if we could switch to class, then bitch, you need to lose your motherfucking job too. But before you lose your job, you might need to get your ass motherfucking kicked because you might be doing the same thing. It might be a whole array of them that are doing these things to the children and that you just don't know about it because your child is only in that one class the next teacher in the next room could be doing the same fuck shit to somebody else's kid okay let alone you not saying nothing girl please i would say something i would go to children and family services and say something i was i would call the tape the state and say something i would report her to everybody that i could to say something and i you know what i would do because i'm a bitch i'm a real motherfucker i would be sitting in my car waiting for everybody that came out of there with their kids and letting their parents know well i took my daughter out because of this and this and this this reason and i wish a motherfucker would say some shit to me okay i definitely would go and make a scene what they gonna do call the police so fucking what call the goddamn police maybe then some shit will get fixed around here but i definitely wouldn't sit there and and let god play you are the god god sent you this you said let god deal with it well god sent you and this is what you're supposed to do make sure that you take care of this there are other children that are going there your daughter was removed from the class there's gonna be somebody else that's kid that go to that class and is being traumatized and threatened and beat on and mistreated Okay, by Miss Darcel. All right, so I definitely would say something. Don't keep that shit to your motherfucking self. Shit, say some shit about that shit. <sighs> I wish I lived in Ohio, cause that bitch, I'll be standing right there outside of her classroom door, like, is there a problem? Is there a motherfucking problem? Got somebody that's a grown ass woman that's bullying somebody that's little, then. Bitch, you need to be evaluated. Not only that, but you need to find a new job. This career is not for you. And I would not be the one sitting there and not saying nothing. A bitch would have gotten her ass motherfucking whooped if it were my child. And I probably would have caught a case, but you know what? At the end of the day, I bet you would never put your hands on nobody else's kids. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Erin, you need to um, file suit and put some complaints in and let them lose their motherfucking license. Because if that's okay with them, then you know something? They don't need to be operating and they don't need to be taking care of nobody's fucking kids. Bottom line. Facts. Okay, you guys. So this is going to be the last one. Now I'm going to go ahead and try some of this Lancome all day wear. I know you're like, uh, girl, you got enough on your face. But like I said, I like to use it in like certain areas because sometimes you don't want to be too highlighted. Like I don't really want to be too high. This is the, um, oh my God. It's, it's by the same people that make this orange sponge. I can't remember real quick, but I like this one, but not as much. It's kind of awkward to use, so I don't really use it as much. It, it gave me like a nice little sheen finish, but like I said, I don't really like that beauty blender too much. So yeah. Now I'm gonna just use this a little bit to set my face. I like this air spun stuff, but the only thing that I don't really like about it too much is the fragrance. Like it's a very powerful, very, very potent. I just use a little bit like this. But ooh, have me smelling powdery. So let's get into the next one. I have changed the name so you can just read on. My name is Denise and I recently got engaged to the love of my life, Javon. We have been together for two years now and last year he proposed to me on my birthday, which is also the day that we met each other two years ago. Let's move past that. I have struggled with my weight since I was the age of 12 and since giving birth to my son, I have gained an extra 30 pounds. But lately I have been very insecure and my confidence is much less than what it used to be. And it has nothing to do with my fiance, but everything to do with his friends. I recently read a few texts from his best friends who he looks up to as a brother and they were having a conversation about their previous ex-girlfriends and his best friend mentioned to him that I didn't fit in his type of, of woman, meaning my fiance. Fiance type of woman meaning 
what? His best friend also mentioned in the text about how my fiance has never dated a plus size woman like myself and that he should suggest the idea of me to start detoxing and working out so that I can lose weight. This is not the first time this has happened. I have seen my many similar texts in his phone with his friends mentioning the same things whenever him and his friends were chatting in group text. I have seen him reply back telling the numerous times that my weight doesn't change the way that he loves me and I have also mentioned to him myself about my insecurities with my weight and he has always says to me baby whatever you want me to do with you so that we can work on this and make you happy again then I'm all for it. Maybe I am just tripping. I thought it was bad enough that I was already beating myself up about my weight but here it is. I have his friends judging me as if they actually know my struggle. I feel like he wants to tell me exactly what his friend has mentioned, but instead of flat out telling me that, he may just be waiting for me to become interesting in doing so. So, for the past seven weeks, I have been exercising with my trainer and detoxing, but my fiance put a stop to me exercising with my trainer two days ago after one of his friends saw my trainer at a subway eating together, he and I, and damn, that damn fool told my fiance that I was out on a lunch date. Let's just say that argument went way too damn far and the next thing I knew my fiance was on the phone with my trainer telling him to cancel our workout meetings and sessions. That brunch at Subway was a typical damn snack and my trainer was discussing meal and nutrition plans with me. Then to put the icing on the cake, my fiance decided that he would be my workout partner and trainer but has yet to give me any kind of support with pushing me to become a better me weight wise. I love my fiance very much and I know that he loves me just as well but should I tell him about the text and then address his friends when they come over to our place or should I just let him know or should I not let him know anything about the text and say, and just go the fuck off when I see his friends in person help me please and thank you in advance Damn. So Denise is engaged to Javon. And so she's always had a weight issue since her age of 12. You know something? She's gained an extra 30 pounds since having her baby. You know something, sweetheart? I can totally, totally relate to that. I, I can, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I haven't struggled with weight since an age of 12, but I have struggled with my weight for the past, like, 12 years, 10 years, you know, I, I, ever since I've had like my fourth and fifth child, I have never been able to get back to the size that I was at unless I really, 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 really went hard at working out. Okay. And it just gets harder as you get older. Also for the fact that, you know what I'm saying? I have my daughter Mumsy and she's 10 and I have gotten many very disheartening messages on emails um, that meet um, on videos talking about how she needs to lose weight and you know things of that nature and you know you don't know a person's struggle and on top of that you can't just say to somebody you know she needs to detox and she needs to lose some weight and she needs to do this because you really don't know what they're going through and you don't really know why they may be overweight and you know just like the other day we I put up a family vlog I put up a family vlog and Mumsy wasn't eating in a video, but it doesn't even matter. This one this one woman, whoever, came for me. She was like, I'm not coming from a hateful place by saying this. And basically, she just said that your daughter needs to lose weight. People are going to bully her, and et cetera, et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I guess she would have to lose height then, too, right? Because Mumsy is, I'm 5'3". Mumsy is 5'5". Five, five, she's taller than most 10-year-olds, okay? So she's really tall for her size, and she's bigger for her size. So what the fuck do you want her to lose height, too? Um, um, but, you know, she came for me saying that shit and a lot of people went off on her because who are you to talk about somebody bullying somebody because that's what the fuck you're doing. And you don't know what I feed my daughter talking about. You should take her on your walks with you. How do you know I don't take her? You know what I'm saying? I, just because I don't mention something to you doesn't mean I'm not fucking doing it. But here's the thing about it. It's just it's just very disheartening when people can constantly judge another person on their waist size. That's one fucking thing that I cannot stand. Stop talking about people's weight and how much they weigh. What the fuck does it matter to you if somebody weighs 100 pounds over? Like, is it if for them to lose weight? Is it going to make you feel any better? Is it going to make your motherfucking life any different than what the fuck it is now? You know what I'm saying? Like, me personally, I, I understand her struggle because, you know, I went, I used to go to the gym every single day, five days a week with my husband, okay? I know I call him my husband. He's really my ex-husband, but whatever. We about to get remarried, okay? So, anyway, we would go five days a week, and... 
I would I stopped eating certain things. I stopped eating cakes. I stopped eating fast food. I stopped drinking soda. I only would drink water all the time. Drink water, and I made sure to eat my meals. Okay, so I lost a lot of weight. I went from wearing a size 16 to wearing a size 10. And then when things got complicated between he and I, and we stopped going to the gym together. I stopped going because I didn't have him there with me. Now he wasn't always there with me at the gym. Meaning he was there, but he wasn't there. He wasn't spotting me. He wasn't telling me to do this thing and do that thing. Some things he would help me out with. And he motivated me, but some things he didn't because sometimes I would just want his company. Knowing the fact that he was there with me made me go and it, and it motivated me. However, I don't have him here now. So I have nobody to motivate me to lose weight. So I go on these walks every morning with my grandson. I've had many gym memberships, but you know what? It's not the same without the person that I really care for. However, here's the thing. You never change yourself for nobody, okay? You change yourself for you, okay? That's what you do. Fuck his friends. Me personally... Okay, let me tell you something. Your boyfriend ain't paying for your gym membership. Your boyfriend ain't paying for your trainer. And your boyfriend damn sure ain't sitting there telling you what healthy meals and so forth to eat. I'm, I'll be honest and tell you this. Me, a bitch like me would probably definitely go the fuck off. Like, listen. Listen, Linda, listen. It's one thing to keep a lot of things to yourself because you hurt and you don't want to feel the embarrassment. And sometimes you just want to avoid the whole situation altogether. But here is the thing. Don't let anybody disrespect you. Don't let people sit up there and talk about you, girl. He acting like it's like it ain't nothing. Okay, yeah, he might be defending you to a certain extent. However, however, he ain't he ain't fucking defending you to 100% extent because if he was then he would have never ever 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 said anything to your trainer about what his so-called friend seen you or where his friend seen you at okay that's just my opinion okay that's just how i feel about it he wouldn't have did that he would have told his so-called friend to mind his own business okay and continue to let you train if that made you feel good but here's the thing your boyfriend don't have no self-confidence in himself no or the relationship because if he did he would have been went off okay and he would have been never said nothing to you about the trainer okay now here's what i would do and this is just my personal experience with going through people's phones you didn't really tell me how you found out about the text message but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really matter the whole mere fact is that they're sitting there discussing you which is really not cool this is what i would do this 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 is what april would do okay i would let that nigga know first of all I'm going to go back to training because that's what made me happy and this is how it made me feel. Second of all, you're going to tell your little ratchet friends to stop talking about me because I've read your text messages talking about how I'm overweight and so forth. If you don't put a stop to it, I'm going to put a stop to it. Bottom line. Let's see how he likes that. I mean, if you want to go off on his friends, then baby girl, that's your decision and your choice. And I'm totally on your side. If I could be right there with you, I definitely would be. Because I don't like that fucking name calling. I don't like that body shaming but shit at all. People like ourselves, you know, sometimes we do need a friend to go with us to the gym. Sometimes we do need that extra motivation to make us feel better and feel a little bit more secure about ourselves. And then it's hard sometimes when you are an insecure person and you feel some type of way about your body and you know that people are talking about you. You don't need other people saying things about you, especially to someone who you are engaged to and are with. You know what I'm saying? That's the part that really fucks with you emotionally. Me personally, I would definitely say something to him. I mean, you can go off if you want to, but you know something at the end of the day going off only is going to last but for so long a nice heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him would definitely work and going off on his friends i mean that too that works too because let me tell you this i hate a nigga who has some nosy ass fucking friends like mind your motherfucking business okay is there a statute of limitations to friendship uh, i'm just saying uh, or just like mind your motherfucking business like i always say mind your motherfucking neck okay Mind your neck. Don't worry about who I'm sleeping with. Don't worry about my girlfriend's size. They, he needs to put his foot down. But you know something? They're going to continue to talk about you, sweetheart, regardless. If you go off on them, 
They gonna talk about you then too. They gonna say some shit like, did you see how that fat bitch went the fuck off on us? They gonna still say something about you. I mean, but sometimes, you know what, there comes a time and a place when, you know, a person can get tired and fed up and can't take that shit but so long. So I definitely feel you on that. And I definitely, me personally, I probably would go the fuck off too. But I definitely would have my words with him and let him know, look, fucking bitch. Because I would call him a bitch, probably. That would be me calling him a bitch. Because you got your friends sitting up here talking shit about me. Talking about my weight and shit. And making me feel some type of way. And here you is coming at me over some fucking trainer at Subways. I wouldn't be at Subways if it wasn't for you and your raggedy ass friends running their fucking mouths. Talking body shame about people. Oh. Losing weight is a hard struggle. I remember on my first channel, it took me... Like, you know, I was so insecure about my weight. And... I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm very, very thankful for my ex-husband because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have lost all that weight. You know what I'm saying? And I know I probably could do it again. However, however, I need like a workout partner, honestly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need someone that's definitely going to like motivate me and be my friend and be there and be like go girl go go girl or just feel the same way as I do about the weight loss struggle like I, honestly I don't really want to work out with somebody that's fucking a size three what the fuck says that's gonna that's not gonna do nothing for a bitch I mean I'm just saying I would not be happy with working out with somebody that was that skinny I'd be looking at that bitch like why don't you go get something to eat ain't you hungry yet I'm saying, you hungry? Okay, so I'm going to use this Becca Sunlight Bronzer. This was also sent to me, and I absolutely do like it. It is in the color Maui Night. Okay, so there is a lot of different shades of this, and it's very pretty. Um, it's very, it's very bronzy like. I do love the bronzy like look. But like I was saying, I, I I'm very thankful for my ex husband because he was the one that motivated me a lot and was able to help me through my weight loss journey. And it seems like when you get older, like my age, it it gets a lot harder to take the weight off in general, you know. And I'm I'm be honest, I'm not happy with my size at all. I, I look back a few months ago and I was smaller than this, you know. And it it's all due to my own issues, you know. what I'm saying to my own faults and my own flaws and my own bad habits. And I know that the weight that I have gained back after losing like 20 pounds was is from drinking. Like I don't drink excessively, but I like to have a nice glass of vodka daily or twice with, you know, some raspberry juice mixed in it and stuff like that will, will really make you gain weight. So, you know, that's nobody's fault but mine. This is a really nice bronzer, especially if you want like a very light bronze or what have you. You don't have to like use it as a contour. You could just, you know, like use it as a skin finish or whatever. If you want the sun to hit in like certain areas, this is definitely cool. But, you know, like I said, it's different shades. Um, what shade may work for me may not work for you, but I do like it, but it's not one of my favorite by Becca. So if you're going to go out and get like a bronzer, I wouldn't really highly suggest this one as my favorite. I think this is a really good bronzer for like really, really like fair skin um, women. Or This would probably look really great on someone that had really, really pale skin. Even for me, it doesn't show up as, you know, vibrant as I would like for it to. Because you and I'm not that dark, but this would probably look really great on somebody that has very, very light, very, very pale skin. Okay, so as I was saying before my memory card died, I don't really remember. But I know I look crazy right now because I'm putting on this MAC lip liner that they sent me. Um, you guys know this is not the color that I normally wear. Um, and I actually picked the wrong color because this one is called Talking Points. And then the color that they sent me is flat out. Y'all know I don't wear these color pinks. But for the sake of the video, we're going to do this and put this on and see how it looks. So as I was saying, like... You know, it's hard losing weight and it's a struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, like, oh, it's easy. It's a piece of cake. The older you get, the more weight or the harder it is to keep the weight off. However, I just think that it's wrong for anybody to talk about anybody's weight. Like, where in this world do you think that it's okay to body shame? And where in this world do you feel like if that person loses weight, that it's going to make your life better? You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand where she's coming from, the whole thing about her boyfriend's friends we're texting in a group chat you know what i'm saying that makes you think like oh dude what else is you talking about about me you know what i'm saying 
and it brings me back to that moment when I was telling you guys about that dude that I was messing with that I had to kick out fat dude Jamel you know with the little dick who didn't last and had a little dick well when he got arrested I got him arrested I went through his tablet and he was on Facebook Messenger, never logged out because it was his tablet. He was just talking to random bitches. And he was talking to some guy in Brazil. And it seemed like some old gay shit talk. Now, I'm not against gays, but don't fake the funk around me. If you want to be gay and you want to get the dick, boo, get the dick. Don't fucking be around me, though, with that shit. And act like we in a relationship and try to degrade me. But anyway... He was talking to random girls, so I read through the messages. He was talking to some girl about my daughter Mumsy's weight, and it made me feel like some type of way, like, okay, it hurt me because here it is, dude. She nine years old at the time, and you sitting up here smiling up in her face and talking talking to her, but meanwhile, you on social media and Facebook talking to random bitches that you don't even know, talking about how my daughter is fat, overweight, and how... Oh, uh, you didn't try to tell me that, but I no, no, the fuck you didn't never try to tell me that. And if you had said something about my daughter's weight, nigga, you might have really got fucking your feelings hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because don't sit up here and talk about nobody's weight when you ain't you you overweight. You know what I'm saying? But even if you wasn't overweight, who are you to judge anybody or anybody's weight? Like, where in the Bible or anybody's godly book does it say thou shall be skinny? Because if it does, please screenshot me a picture of that shit because I need to motherfucking know. Like, why does everybody worry so much about what everybody else is doing or wearing, okay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's always judging somebody's hair, makeup, clothes, weight size. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll be the first to admit, like, yeah, I will say something, something about somebody's motherfucking wig in a heartbeat, okay? I had no shame in that because I do hair. I make wigs. So, it's like, okay, that wig been through, girl. It looked like it got dragged down the street. Why is you even wearing that shit you would have been better off wearing your own hair okay so i mean i'm guilty for that but i don't go around being like oh you fat bitch oh look at this plus size girl personally honestly plus size women are beautiful to me skinny women are beautiful to me if i had to choose which one i would be i would like to be a plus size woman with no stomach that's it okay that's my preference okay that's what i want to be i don't want to be bones to stick nothing against skinny people but i like my size i just don't like my stomach you know what i'm saying i don't like the fact that when i gain weight I lose my motherfucking neck, okay? But where do people find it okay to just degrade plus size women? Like, the word plus does plus size gets to me. Like, so now we are plus a motherfucking size? Bitch, Bob, where the fuck is that? Is that, where is that fucking right to say to anybody? We are a size, not plus a motherfucking size, okay? Who said that being a size 10 is supposed to be? Who says being a size 3 is supposed to be, Okay. You are who the fuck you are. That's what makes the world go round. We are the size we are because that's who the fuck we are. And, like, I get really fucking pissed off when people have to say anything about my daughter's weight. Like, that's when it's like, you know what? Hold up because the nice April is about to not be. And everybody's, I'm about to fucking buck shots at every motherfucking body. You know what I'm saying? Because my daughter is who the fuck she is, okay? She is different. I'm different. And all my other kids is motherfucking different, okay? She don't have, she don't feel no type of way about her size she don't feel insecure about her size and i'm happy and i'm proud for her to for her that she feels this way that she she she's not insecure and she's not scared or she she doesn't get she, mumsy don't get bullied because mumsy is tall as, as a motherfucker okay she's taller than everybody in her class so she's a tall th a fourth grader she's very tall for her size her age so you know what i'm saying she ain't gonna get bullied and those who get bullied are those who don't speak just because you overweight don't mean that you gonna get bullied let me tell y'all I got bullied all my school life. Freckles on my face. I stay getting bullied, okay? Oh, freckle face. You made some juice today. Freckle juice, freckle juice. Or, did somebody put piss in your cup because you pissy yellow? Like, okay, oh, you got an extra stripe on your sneakers. Those ain't Adidas. Like, I will get shit like that said to me on a regular basis. So, don't think just because you're a certain size, you're going to be bullied. Because somebody's going to find some reason to motherfucking bully you. However, when you got your fiance's friends bullying you on the low, that's some totally different shit. Honey, sweetheart, I would definitely say something to that nigga about that shit. Y'all see me really trying hard to put this lipstick on, so hold on for one second. Okay, guys, three years later, I'm not the best with putting lipstick on. I will definitely admit to that. It has a lot to do with my lip right here. I got bit by my own dog when I was 
I think it was 10 or 11. I blew a whistle in his ear. I'm not sure if I told you guys this story, but I blew a whistle in his ear and he growled and then I did it again because my cousin was like, do it again, do it again. And so I did it again and he bit me in my face. So I was rushed to the emergency room because he bit my lip off. So half of my lip was hanging off, okay? So yeah, I have like um, a huge like scar inside of my lip and where everybody's lip would curve on this side, I don't have that here. So it's kind of hard sometimes for me to wear like certain colors because it makes it really, really noticeable. But anyway, so like I was saying, we're going to get through to this video real quick. I'm going to end this video. I just want people to know like, you know something, never feel like you should be like a certain size for someone else. You lose weight for yourself. You lose weight because you want to. You lose weight because you want to be happy. You know what I'm saying? This is a dollar from Shop Miss A. I showed you guys this before, and I'll definitely put their link below. But this one is called Icing. But you lose weight because you want to feel good about yourself, not because somebody is pressuring you. If the person is pressuring you, the only person that you should be losing weight for that's pressuring you to lose the weight should be your physician, your doctor. Because if they're pressuring you, that means it's a health issue. But if your man is like, oh, you need to lose weight or whatever, then that means he really doesn't love you for the person you are. Yes, everybody wants to be healthy. We all do. But here's the thing. This is what I try to get you guys to understand. How you know that somebody that's a certain way ain't fucking healthy you don't know that you you don't know you don't know why they're that way you don't know if they're healthy or not you don't know their struggle you don't know what they're doing to lose the weight you don't know if it's their metabolism you don't know if it's their thyroid you know what i'm saying you don't know this okay in my family my mother has bad thyroid so she loses weight and gains it back she has been lucky enough to keep the weight off for quite some years now but you don't know what's going on in a person's life another one for a dollar this one is snap but like i said you don't know what a person is going through you don't know the struggle so don't be so quick to judge somebody on what they're wearing what they look like what their hair look like what their waist size is and stop and stop body shaming people like yeah i'll be quick to call somebody a fat bitch in a minute but when I call somebody a fat bitch, does not mean I'm trying to body shame you, okay? Does not mean I'm trying to hurt you like that, okay? And does not mean to tell you, bitch, you need to lose some weight. That's not the comps. That's not the reason why I'm saying you're a fat bitch, okay? I'm a fat bitch, okay? You're a fat bitch. That's not, no. It's not what I'm doing. But... Me, personally, I just take that to heart because I know how she feels. Because So, and I know, I do apologize, you guys, for this video being so long and the color going in and out. Now, look at me. Now, my makeup is looking perfect. The sun keeps shining and it keeps going away. I wish it would just stay one place, okay? And quit it already. But a lot of, all, mostly all the items that I used in this video were definitely from Oxley.com. All free stuff. A girl loves some free stuff. I would say if I had to choose out of all of the products that I really love the most for my face, it's definitely this Estee lot of long wear definitely check it out and pick it up if you are in need of some new foundation it does last all day it's amazing i really do love it and if you are ready for some turn around and mm, smell me perfume i didn't want to say that then definitely check out um this one right here because oh my god oh Givenchy it smells so good. I love it. I'm smelling myself as we're talking because, you know, I love a good fragrance. Definitely love a good fragrance. As for the Becca um, bronzer, like I said, this is really good for, like, really, really fair, fair, light, light, pale skin. Try this again. I'm probably going to put a lot. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. So it's actually really good, but now I look like a Jezebel, and it all has to do with this lipstick, okay? Now, like I said, I'm not, I don't wear these colors. Um, it would definitely have to be on a certain occasion, because these colors are definitely not for me on my lips. Like, I know y'all like, girl, that look cute on you. Y'all don't have to tell me that bullshit. Don't, don't, don't tell me those bullshit lies, because, listen, I ain't even trying to hear those bullshit lies about... Oh, it looks real cute on me. The lipstick does not, okay? I feel, look, you know what's so funny? I'm going to bring this lipstick to my mother when I go to New York because she stayed wearing this color. It wasn't this brand, but this was like her all-time go-to color. That's all she would wear. She would put a little bit on her cheeks and stuff as rouge and shit. This is, this is my mom's color, not mine's. I don't do like these crazy-looking 
colors. Oh, I forgot to put my bottom lash mascara on. Now I really do feel like a Jezebel. I don't even know why I'm going to put... I'm not even going to worry about these lower lips. Definitely check out Oxley. Definitely check out the brands that I featured today in this Real Talk. And I do apologize, you guys, for the video being so long. Um, but I just wanted to share some new items with you and definitely give you the opportunity to check out um, Octoly and definitely never be insecure over your body weight. We're all different. We're all human beings. I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you check out my vlogs of me and my family when we're being so crazy. I love you guys, and I will see you in a soon to come video.